So this is the Marvelous Designer website, and it shows some of their products in use. And if we go to the pricing tab, we can see that for a personal license, it costs $59.99 a month, or $360 a year, or a $550 one-time fee. But if you want to use it at work, it will cost you $4,000 for a professional license and $6,000 for a render farm. Starting out in the scene that we've been using, we're going to select the mesh from our dazed model. We're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to select all of the channels and right click and go to unlock selected. Then we're going to go up to modify. First, I'm adding the default Lambert shader. Then we're going to go up to Modify and Center Pivot. Then I'm pulling it off to the side. You don't have to do this. You can leave it at zero. Going to give it an even number. We'll translate it to 20. Then I'm going to increase the scale to 10, which makes it 10 times larger than it was. Then we'll frame our selection. And you can see by the grid that it's now 10 times larger. Then we want to go to File, Export Selection, open up the Option box. We're going to change the file type to OBJ, which should be close to the bottom. If you do not have this option, on your file export, open up Windows, Settings and Preferences, go down to the Plugin Manager, scroll down to near the bottom, and you'll see a file called OBJ Export. And you want to make sure that it is loaded and auto loaded. And close that. So once you find your OBJ Export, then we'll click Export Selection, and we're going to call it Marvelous Designer because that's where we're sending it. Take a note of where you hit it. This is what Marvelous Designer looks like when you first open it. And the scrolling attributes are different than Maya. So you might want to take a note of that. And we're just going to delete the default pattern that comes with it. And we're going to turn the avatar off. And then we're going to delete the pattern in the avatar window. Next, we want to go to File, Import, OBJ. And we'll navigate to where we saved our file. And we're going to open that. It will give us a few different options. We want to load it as an avatar at 100%. And we're going to click centimeters because that's the default days native. We'll press OK. And it will import our avatar. And we can see that it's not quite lined up on the center. That's because we moved it to 20 units to the right getting used to scrolling here. If you notice the shadow on our model is lined up with the ground plane. Since our model is also hanging below the ground plane, the shadow does not reflect that accurately. Then we're looking at some of our tools here. We want to go to the rectangle tool. I'm not going to do an entire video on how to use Marvelous Designer. There's plenty of those out there. But we're going to go over how to make the t-shirt the dazed model is wearing really fast. If you right click, you get an option box. And if you left click, then you can do an arbitrary rectangle. Then we want to go over to the edit pattern button. We can select the entire pattern and move it into place. And then if we just click on one of the vertices or one of the edges, then we can move them independently of each other. So we're going to lower the bottom edge down to about the waist and line up the top edge with the neck. Then we want to go to the add point tool and we'll add some points for the neck. And we'll also add some points for the sleeves. This is probably the worst t-shirt ever made. And we're going to drop the neckline down into a curvature. 
Once again, selecting our Edit Pattern tool, we're going to select the entire pattern. Then we want to Control C to copy and Control V to paste. Shows the manipulator tool for the avatar window. It's not the best, but it works. We want to fairly line up our pattern on the avatar. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to copy this side of the t-shirt. And then we're going to paste it. We could also do a mirror paste, which probably would have been better in this case. And once we have both of them, we're going to position them on the model. There's a button that does this automatically, but I'm not exactly an expert on Marvelous Designer, so I'm not sure where that is. We just want to give you the idea of how to transfer your models from Maya to Marvelous Designer and back again. Right now we're drawing the sleeves. You want to draw them about two times as wide as the arm. Then we're going to duplicate the sleeve for the other side. Now we're going to start sewing our pattern together by selecting the segment sewing. And we'll start by sewing the tops and bottom of the sleeve together. You'll notice there's a right and left cross on the sew button. That will become apparent in a moment. Just like most programs, by pressing Control Z, you can go back if you don't like the move that you've made. Just trying to line up the sides of our t-shirt now. If you'll notice in the avatar window, you can actually see the seams in real time. Like this one, I have crossed, and so we're going to delete it and start over again. And we'll line it up correctly. Doing also the other side. And then we want to add a point to our sleeve. So we're going to add a vertex on either side because they have to be sewn to both the front and back of our pattern. We'll go back to the sew tool. We want to make sure to line up the center point with the top of the front and back panel on our pattern. We also want to correctly position the sleeves, otherwise, they won't get positioned around the arm when they're sewn together. This is what I was talking about, about how this manipulator tool isn't the best. It's very difficult to, to spin your pattern around or move it and keep it in a horizontal or vertical position. But we want to place the sleeves just above the shoulder so that when they're sewn together, they wrap around the arm instead of getting sewn on the outside of the arm and having the arm stick through the side of the fabric. They don't have to be exact as long as they're fairly close. So if we look closer, we can see that we have put this seam on backwards. We're going to have to redo that one again. Like I said, we want to line up the center point with the top of the panel. So we look for the little X and make sure it's at the top and at the center and click. Now we have our seam correctly placed. Now we'll duplicate this process with the other arm. Select the pattern, move it into position.
a lot of making cartoons is just doing it because it's a lot of busy work. Repetitively doing the same actions over and over again. Again here we've misplaced our seam. We want to line up the center of the seam with the top of the panel and also the bottom with the bottom of the panel. We will set our last seam here, lining up the center with the top. And that should do it. Then we want to press the simulate button. It will sew our pattern together and we have our t-shirt. This really slows down the processor on your computer when you're running a live simulation. My computer is running with an Nvidia Quadro and a Tesla which have 8 gigs. It also has 256 gigs of RAM. You might want to go to the settings, preferences, go to the graphics option, turn off shadows, turn off the shader, and put the anti-aliasing at zero. Notice that you also have to restart the program if you're going to do these settings. Back to our scene, you'll notice that the back of the t-shirt is a different color than the front. That's because the back panel has been sewn on backwards. This will become a problem later. We're going to export it as an OBJ, we're going to name it Marvelous Designer 2. And when we look at our save options, it gives us all of our different pieces, and we can save them as a single object or multiple objects. We're not going to use our avatar because we already have that in our original scene. We just want to send a t-shirt. We're going to weld the pieces together and use thin cloth as opposed to thick. Again, we want to set our size for centimeters. And those should be all the options we need to set. At the bottom, we'll press OK. Then I'm going to close Marvelous Designer because it's really chugging my system down. We want to import our pattern, we'll find our OBJ and import it. Now you can see that the shirt has been imported into Maya, and it's still rather large and offset by 20. So we're going to shrink our model back to one, and we'll take our shirt, it's already set at one, so we're going to shrink it to point 0.1. This is where it would have been nicer to have left our model centered. Because now, as you can see, it's off center and it's also low in the scene. So we're going to center pivot and we're going to line it up manually. Just going to eyeball it, it doesn't matter. We're going to have to assign an end cloth material to it when we go to animate. Marvelous Designer also has an animate feature. So you can take your animated model and transfer it as a cache file into Marvelous Designer and then animate your fabric in Marvelous Designer and bring it back as a cache file. If you're having trouble getting your clothing to line up, you can always increase the size slightly. As you can see, because I sewed on the back panel backwards, it has this nasty black line down the edge. We're going to add a new material, a Lambert. We're going to change the color to pink. And then we can adjust the density of our color. 
the brightness. As you can see, the Marvelous Designer garment has triangles, while the one that I'm using in my scene with the Hello Kitty picture has quads. The way that I made quads using Marvelous Designer 3 was to export my garment to Mudbox. First, I'm going to rename it as Marvelous Designer. Then I'm going to increase its size to 10. Then we'll press F to frame it again. As you can see, it's much larger now. This should be the correct size for Mudbox. I'm going to delete our model because we don't need to use that anymore. I'm going to export this back to the original OBJ to save it, just in case we mess it up in Mudbox. So, we'll go to our original Marvelous Designer OBJ and save it, overwrite it, and then we want to go to File, and we'll go Send to Mudbox, Send as a new scene, and it will auto-connect and send our geometry to Mudbox. The first thing you notice is we get an error message because the panel was put on backwards. But we're going to ignore it and keep going. We want to go down to the bottom of Mudbox and click the objects under the Select Move tools. Then we'll go to Mesh, Retopologize, New Operation. We have it set for a 3000 poly count, but I'm not sure if that's the correct amount. So we'll go back to Maya and we will select our shirt, then we want to go to display, heads up display, and poly count. Then with our shirt selected, we can check the faces and we see that our Hello Kitty shirt has 3,100 faces. So 3,000 polygons should be adequate for our shirt. Then we'll just leave everything at the generic and we will press retopologize. It gives us an error message and says that it cannot do it with the panel put on backwards and using cross vertices. So we would have to start the process over from the beginning, but you get the general idea of how to transfer geometry between Maya, Marvelous Designer, Mudbox, and back.